Alrighty, this uh, fluorescent light fixture came out of our uh, most recent pickup, Road Find. So let's uh, talk about how to scrap this out for the most money and most importantly, how to do it safely. As you can see, these uh, ballasts have yeah, some pretty nice uh, copper wire on them. It depends on how you pick them up, obviously, how much is going to be hanging on the end of them. Uh, but there will be some on the inside and uh, the first thing you want to do is find your uh, whatever mechanism that they've got that holds this bottom panel on you want to turn that whatever it is turn it you know, screw some of them turn by hand and you'll just pull this end up and it'll slide out down here take that piece off and of course you want to test it with your magnet I know this is uh, steel because it has uh, rust on it so we'll set that off to the side now the next thing you need to do is look on the inside obviously and find your ballast now you need to take a look at your ballast and and stop right here and make some identifications I see a lot of people on YouTube taking these ballasts out, messing around with them, busting them up and that kind of thing. These ballasts have PCBs on the inside. That's polychlorinated biphenyls. That is a cancer causing chemical to humans. So you need to identify your ballast before you take it any further. Now, let's go and talk a little bit about ballasts. Ballasts that are what they call electric ballast most of the time will not have PCBs in them. Now the uh, magnetic style ballasts like you see here on the top that are pre-1979 they're gonna have the bad stuff in them. Now you can look on newer electrical style ballasts that are non-magnetic and they'll be marked somewhere. I know this is teeny small. I don't know if I can yeah, the closer I get to that is is not going to focus, but it will see it will be clearly marked no PCBs. Now those ballasts you can open up, you can uh you know, stick in the freezer and uh you know, get them real cold where that encapsulation will just break out uh, real easily. Uh, and, and there's a little bit of copper that's in a winding. It's almost like a, uh, uh, like a motor or a uh, transformer style. It'll be copper wrapped around a, a metal uh, brake. Now, the older, if it's, you know, to, to keep yourself safe, if it's older than 1979, don't open it. I repeat, do not open it. If it is not clearly marked on the label saying no PCBs, do not open it. It's just not worth it. The, the amount of copper that you can get out of it will never pay you enough dividends to, to, to keep from getting cancer. You know, or it can irritate your throat. Uh, it can cause uh, burns to your skin. It, it's just, it's a bad, bad thing. So if you're doing scrapping, keep yourself safe. If it's not marked no PCBs, then just take it to your scrapyard and sell it as a ballast. If not, then it needs to be disposed of properly. So let's get back to our scrapping our, ba our light bar ballast. Okay, let's take another look at our ballast. Now, like I say, well, I picked this up on the side of the road in a scrap run, so I have no idea how old it is or what it came out of. So therefore, to keep myself safe, I'm going to look at the label. And nowhere on the label does it say no PCBs. So if it doesn't say it and I don't know how old it is, I have to assume that it has a minute. So this ballast will not be a candidate to be taken apart. So let's finish up with our 
scrapping of our light ballast. Safety first, let's get our gloves back on. Alrighty, got our gloves back on, our, our eye protection, and we're ready to uh, finish our scrap out of our light bar. So we can just take our wire clippers, cut our wire loose, This end, get that straightened out and pulled away from it. A lot of these ballasts you're going to see uh, come out of old schools, industrial buildings. Uh, those are the ones that you really have to worry about uh, PCBs being in. Uh, that stuff's just bad news. Uh, take a pliers here and get our screw out and of course it didn't want to work just by taking the fingers out so I have to finish this out sometimes it's a little hard to do stuff with the gloves on but it's still better to have them on than risk getting cut or some other funkiness. All right, now, if, if this were a ballast, now remember I say if it were a ballast with no PCBs in it, there's a couple of ways you can uh, uh, get the uh, copper out of these. Uh, you can take uh, a flathead screwdriver and drive along this line on either side and fold this top piece of steel off and what you're going to see inside that is, is just two copper wines on this end and maybe one on this end it, it depends on how they're made and they're going to be in a an encapsulation uh, just like it's a liquid stuff that they pour on top of it to keep some this outside uh, uh, from touching the metal and it uh, acts as an insulator to keep these uh, uh, these things get hot and it keeps them from starting fires and that kind of thing. That's why some of the older ballast uh, that will fail and overheat and that causes a lot of fires and that's why schools and industrial buildings and stuff like that have been replacing them. So you're going to see those in your scrap runs. That's why I wanted to touch on it and make sure that you understood the importance of not messing with one with the PCBs in it. Now you can also, uh, to make this encapsulation more brittle in a non PCB unit is you can stick it in the freezer for a little while and uh, once that gets cold it's going to get brittle and just take it out and take your hammer and just pop it a couple times down through there and it'll all shave off but that's again a non PCB ballast. Now this is we're assuming that this is going to be a danger ballot ballast because it's not marked not having them in it and we don't know the age so we're going to set this aside and that's going to go to our scrap yard as a ballast. Now we can finish up uh, with our scrap here. Let's get this wire pulled out. That's going to be some nice copper wire there. We'll have another couple turns uh, there that we can cut loose. And again on this side, we'll, that's some pretty good wire. Uh, you can either take the time to take those uh, screws out to release that or cut it underneath it. Most of the time what I just do is reach underneath there and clip the wire. And the rest of this is, is good solid shred steel. So that is a safe way to scrap a fluorescent light fixture for the most money and uh, keep yourself around to be able to spend that money. Get out there and find the stuff, do research on it, and uh, you know there's other videos here on YouTube. Keep yourself safe, but pad that pocket at the same time. Again, thanks for watching and uh, happy scrapping.